Let's discuss Unit 2 Computer System Architecture Solution. Which of the following circuit is used to store one bit of data? A decoder is a combinational circuit that converts binary information from n coded inputs to a maximum of 2 power n unique outputs. So it is n inputs to 2 power n outputs. An encoder is a digital circuit that performs the inverse operation of a decoder. So here the input will be 2 power n and output will be n. So here it is not about 1 bit of data. The number is in n and 2 power n. So we will go for the next option. A flip flop is a binary cell capable of storing 1 bit of information. So what is 1 bit? Either a 0 or a 1 will be stored. Circuit that can maintain a binary state. So it is a 0 or a 1. Here the storing 1 bit of information is what they are asking as 1 bit of data. It has two outputs. One for the normal value and one for the complement value of the bit stored in it. In case the value is actually 1, the complement 0 will also be given as output. And if the stored value is 0, the complement 1 will also be given. So that's what they say, 1 for the normal value and 1 for the complement. In that case, they are going to store only 1 bit of data, either a 0 or a 1. The next option, a register is a group of flip-flops with each flip-flop capable of storing 1 bit of information. So here they say, Every flip-flop will store one bit of information and register will be a group of flip-flops. So more than one bit of data can be stored. An n-bit register has a group of n flip-flops and is capable of storing any binary information of n bits. So n flip-flops and n bits which says one flip-flop will store one bit. Option number 3, flip-flop will be the right answer. Flip-flop is used to store one bit of data. Next question, identify the code sequence. They have given four options, BCD, binary coded decimal, XS3, XS3 gray and gray code. Out of these four options, you can find one thing, 1010, one bit is changed, 1011, now this bit is changed 1001 now this bit is changed 1000 so only one bit is getting changed here we will have a look at all the codes so we have the decimal format here for bcd and gray we are having from 0 to 15 and xs3 is actually base 10 code that's why we are stopping it with 9 0 to 9 and XS3 gray also we are stopping with 0 to 9. So what is BCD? You have 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2 and 2 power 3. So 1, 2, 4, 8. 8, 4, 2, 1 code. And what is XS3? It is the BCD code plus 3. So this is actually 3 in decimal. So when you have 8, 4, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 will give you 3. So you have to add 3 to it. If it starts from 0, this will start from 3. So 0 plus 3, then 1 plus 3, then 2 plus 3, it goes on. So it is 3, it is 4, it is 5, it is 6, it is 7, it goes on like this. Whatever I write is decimal value. Next is XS3 gray code. Here XS3 gray code is again gray code plus 3. So from 3, it will be starting. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and everything will go from here. XS3 BCD starts from here and XS3 gray starts from here. With gray code, only one bit changes state from one position to another. This is what is happening with the code sequence here. And where do you find this code sequences from this part to this part? This is what is given in the question 1010, 1011, 1001 and 1000. And so we can say that option 3 gray code will be the right answer. So we know how to calculate BCD, how to calculate XS3 and we also know how to get XS3 gray from gray. But what is actually gray? It is one bit changing from one position to another. Just we will see. Here 0 is getting changed to 1 and this 0 is changing to 1. 
and again this one is converting to 0 then this 0 is changing to 1 and this 0 is changing to 1 then this one is changing to 0 so at a time only one bit is getting changed so this is happening only with gray code next question the micro operation which divides a signed binary number by 2 is shift micro operations are used for serial transfer of data and all the operations given here are shift micro operations in that first we look about logical shift it is the one that transfers 0 through the serial input this is the actual definition of logical shift unfortunately this answer is marked as the official key but it is not the right answer the next one is circular shift it is also known as rotate operation this circulates the bits of the register around the two ends without loss of information we have arithmetic shift this is a micro operation that shifts a signed binary number to the left or right now we look about what is shifting left and what is shifting right an arithmetic shift left multiplies a signed number by 2 so left shift is for multiplication and arithmetic shift right divides the number by 2 which number they are talking about the signed number the micro operation that divides a signed binary number by 2 is arithmetic shift right option 3 will be the right answer next question a program that is used by other routines to accomplish a particular task is called what is a micro operation it's an elementary operation or a basic operation performed on the information stored in one or more registers then what is a micro instruction a micro instruction specifies one or more micro operations for the system micro operation it's a basic operation and when you have many micro operations it is a micro instruction a sequence of micro instructions constitute a micro program when you have many micro instructions this becomes a micro program so there are two terms micro operation and micro program in the option nothing tells about routines here so we are ruling out micro instructions are stored in control memory in groups with each group specifying a routine each computer instruction has its own micro program routine in control memory to generate the micro operations that execute the instruction subroutines are programs that are used by other routines to accomplish a particular task even routine has to be ruled out here option number four subroutine will be the right answer so here is the exact statement that matches the question a subroutine can be called from any point within the main body of the micro program next question an address in main memory is called an address used by a programmer will be called a virtual address and the set of such virtual addresses is the address space an address in main memory is called a location or physical address this is what the question is about the set of such location is called the memory space so address space is about virtual address and memory space is about physical address so option number four physical address will be the right answer the address generated by a segmented program is called a logical address the memory address tells the control where to find an operant in memory next question a system bus in which each data item is transferred during a time slice known in advance to both units source and destination is called data transfers over the system bus may be synchronous or asynchronous so this is about the data transfer over the system bus in a synchronous bus each data item is transferred during a time slice known in advance to both source and destination units so the statement that is asked in the question is about the synchronous bus option 4 will be the right answer then what about asynchronous bus each data item being transferred is accompanied by handshaking control signals to indicate when the data are transferred from the source and received by the destination so data transfer to and from peripherals may be handled in one of the three possible modes 
so under this context you have three modes one is programmed input output another is interrupt initiated input output and the third one is direct memory access which is dma so this is about the data transfer to and from peripherals in direct memory access the interface transfers data into the memory and out of the memory unit through the memory bus then what about mimd flint's classification divides computers into four major groups single instruction stream single data stream called as sist then single instruction stream multiple data stream called as simd multiple instruction stream single data stream called as mist and multiple instruction stream multiple data stream called as mimd which is given in the option what is mimd then this organization refers to a computer system capable of processing several programs at the same time so this is about processing and not about data transfer most multi processor and multi computer systems can be classified in this category so this is about processing and this is about data transfers so under data transfer this is over the system bus and this is to and from peripherals next question the interface that provides io transfer input output transfer of data directly to and from the memory unit peripheral is or are termed as just now we saw the explanation of dma so definitely option a is included whichever option has excluded a can be ruled out data transfer to and from peripherals may be handled in one of the three possible modes so one is programmed io another is interrupt initiated io and the third one is dma the interface that transfers data into and out of the memory unit through the memory bus what is iop input output processor the purpose of iop is to provide an independent pathway for the transfer of information between external devices and internal memory in that way we can also mark iop to be one of the interface a and b only is included in option 3 so option number 3 will be the right answer option 1 is also ruled out so what about the serial and parallel interface let me show you a diagram here you can see the parallel interface as well as the serial interface serial interface supports various serial input output schemes and parallel io ports configurable for a variety of parallel io schemes next question which of the following are main memory you can look at this memory hierarchy diagram actually you have secondary memory as auxiliary memory here magnetic tapes and disks are a part of it then you have io processor then it is actually connected to the main memory and the processor the central processing unit cpu is connected to main memory and cache memory portions of a program or data are brought into the main memory as they are needed by the cpu so from the secondary memory they are brought to the main memory virtual memory is a concept used in large computer systems that permit the user to construct programs as though a large memory space were available equal to the totality of auxiliary memory so it gives a view that more memory space is available it is not directly main memory but it's a concept the cache contains a copy of portions of main memory which says cache memory is also a part of main memory then we have random access memory actually ram is the main memory in a computer we say 4 gb ram 8 gb ram 16 gb ram 32 gb ram everything is about main memory so it's a direct reference since ram is volatile its contents are destroyed when power is turned off so once we switch off the computer whatever is in ram will be destroyed its volatile means it is not permanent then we we'll learn about ssd ssd is solid state drive it's a memory device made with solid state components that can be used as a replacement to a hard disk drive actually it's a secondary device that is used as a replacement to hard disk drive so hdd is not a part of main memory something that is used as a replacement to hdd that is hard disk drive will also not be a part of main memory so this is also excluded and virtual memory is actually a concept so that is also excluded option number 2 b and c will be the right answer 
So only cache memory and RAM are considered to be main memory. So RAM is directly the main memory and cache contains parts of main memory in order to speed up the works. Next question, match list1 with list2. So list1 has some instructions and the explanation is given in list2. So basic computer instructions. The symbol is given in the left side and the description is given in the right side. The first symbol S is at A. The description is skip next instruction if AC is 0. That is if accumulator is 0, skip next instruction. Skip if AC is 0. A is mapping to 4. We will rule out 1 and 4 here. Then we will go to SKI. It is here. Skip on input flag is the description. Skip on input flag means whenever the input flag is on, we have to skip. So B is mapping to 3. So option 3 is also ruled out. S N A. Skip next instruction if AC negative. Skip if AC is negative will be C. C is mapping to 2. I S Z. Increment and skip if 0. Increment M and skip it 0. So it is skip if 0. D is mapping to 1. Option number 2 will be the right answer. You can also have a look about all other symbols and their descriptions once so that it might be useful for you in some other question paper. Next question. In most general case, the computer needs to process each instruction with the following sequence of steps. In the basic computer, each instruction cycle consists of the following phases. Generally, we will say fetch, decode and execute. But what happens is, we will fetch an instruction from the memory. Then we will decode the particular instruction. We will try to read the effective address from memory if the instruction has an indirect address. It means we have to calculate the effective address and then read it from the memory. After reading it from the memory, we will get the operand from the memory and then execute the instruction. So this is what will happen in the instruction cycle phases. So we will start with fetch an instruction from memory. It is directly given. So C will be the first one. We will rule out 1 and 2. Then we go with decode. Decode the instruction is in E. After decoding, we have to check if the particular instruction has any indirect address. When there is indirect address, you have to calculate the effective address. The next option will be A. After calculating the address, I have to read the address from memory. So what will be available in the memory? Operand will be available in the memory. Fetch the operand from the memory. We have D here. Then we go for execute the instruction which is in option B. So this is fetch, this is decode and this is execute. C, E, B is given in both the options. A, D, option number 3 will be the right answer. We will rule out option 4. So this is about calculating the effective address. After calculating, we are fetching the operand from the memory. If your instruction has a direct address, you can go and fetch it from the memory. But if it has an indirect address, you have to calculate the effective address and using that address only, you can fetch the operand from the memory. With this, we are completing unit 2 questions.